Hello, and welcome to our series of webinars on coding and robotics for the NCV syllabus. My name is Jackie Stradom, and I'm the marketing specialist for the TVET sector at Oxford University Press. The name Oxford is, of course, synonymous with our world famous dictionaries. Many of you may know that we publish caps aligned books for the South African schools curriculum. We also publish for the higher education sector. And most of you will be familiar with our books that support the TVET sector. And that is, of course, why we are here today. The South African government has an increased focus on upskilling the youth with technical skills that are sorely lacking in South Africa today. There is also a definite interest and focus on the fourth industrial revolution and where South Africa can play its part in that. So as a result, coding and robotics will be delivered as a curriculum from 2023. Now, we all know this is a brand new syllabus. Everybody is looking for information and for support. We're pleased to say that our books have been approved by the Department of Higher Education and Training, and we actually receive very good feedback on the content and on the structure of the books. Our authors have worked very hard to engage with the syllabus and to deliver books that meet the requirements of the Department of Higher Education and Training. And they've also followed the guidelines that were put in place by the DHET. As such, they are now in a position to be able to offer further support to lecturers through platforms such as this webinar. You might also want to engage with our resource hub where you will find ongoing content that will be posted um, either through blog posts or further, further videos. So we're very pleased that the authors will be joining us to deliver content and will be available after the delivery of the content to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. So while the webinar is in process, please make note of any questions that you may want to ask when we open up the floor for questions. And you are welcome to engage and to find out more. Please note that if for any reason you cannot stay for the full time of the webinar, the webinar will be recorded and everyone will receive a recording afterwards, so you will be able to go through that at your leisure. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to our authors who are our subject specialists. Good day, my name is Amelia Tiflange. I'm the co-author of Succeed in Robotics. I want to thank Oxford University Press for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Renier Engelbrecht will be seen later on in the slides. Robotics is a new subject that will be implemented in the TVET colleges in January 2023 on a level two basis. The main aim of the subject, robotics is an inter and multidisciplinary subject and tool which involve the components of STEAM. STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art and maths education. The one main reason for the increase of robotics as a subject is obviously the link it's got to the fourth industrial revolution and the 21st century skills that will be required by the workforce of the future. It is important if we think about what will the workforce will require that we already, even though we don't know the jobs that the children or students will have, that they are prepared for it. The teaching time and offering time. This subject robotics is a full time course which will run over two semesters, around 24 weeks if we do not include assessment time. There will be two double periods of around one hour and 50 minutes and one single period of about 50 minutes. In total, then 24. This is about 56 hours or 4.5 hours a week. 36 hours will be instructor led hours, which also include practical sessions. 
18 hours are instructor-led contact hours that is just dedicated to practical tutorials. In addition to this, the students will be required to do an additional 10 hours per term or around one and a half hours per week so that they can practice and reinforce and master the practical concepts and skills of the subject. Timetabling will obviously be part of the individual college planning according to how the colleges want it. Resources required, management and budget. Physical resources, each student will be required to have their own computer. A server that can sustain all these computers are very important, with also the necessary security on it. In South Africa, because of load shedding, we also require that a UPS is present to preserve our server and our computers. For furniture, a desk will be required that is sturdy enough to hold the weight of the computer and also a mounted USB port that comes from the computer that makes it easier for the students to attach the different components, for instance, of the Raspberry Pi and um, USB sticks as they require it. All electrical uh, wiring should be secured so that it is away from the students and um, there can't be any fraying happening like that. Teaching and learning materials. It's important that the furniture allow for learning materials so the uh, workspace where the learners can take notes will be very important. The network needs to support the server and the computers and must be updated often. It is also important that security gets put on here to protect the student's information as well as the college information. Software must please be according to the latest software where available and needs to be updated regularly as new updates become available. Um, an additional part of the lab will be required for the robotics. So it is important um, that that gets taken into consideration. With the Raspberry Pi configuration that's required for level two, as well as Arduino projects, it is important that um, the students have the correct Raspberry Pi. And we recommend here that the Raspberry Pi 4 with Model B with 4 gigabytes um, be made available to the students. Um, it would also be a good idea to have a good electronics kit available um, with the breadboard and GPI breakout kit um, that is needed for the students. With management, it will be very important that all equipment be managed properly. So having a sign-in sheet for the specific equipment will be important and maybe not allowing any of the equipment to go out of the labs. Also, budgeting is here very important. So um, a budget should be put together ahead of time so that all the necessary materials can be purchased so that each student have their own available and obviously to replace any damaged equipment. Um, a 25% recycle rate would be a good idea per year so that we can make sure that all the equipment is kept up to date. In this subject, robotics, there is six topics that are covered. The first topic is robots and our lives, where we look at the different robots, where they came from and how they were developed and history. In topic two, which is 3D printing, we specifically look at the 3D printing 
printers, how they've developed, what resources is necessary for them, and so forth. Uh, in the third topic, we are looking at electronics for robotics. Here the learners learn about, um, or students learn about specific electronics that we use for the robotics and how to use it properly, not to hurt the equipment. In topic four, components of a robot, we look at the specific components that gets put together to create the robot. And topic five, which is programming, is very much practical. And so also um, topic six, which is practical robotics. Um, in practical robotics, the learners or students actually learn how to use the robots and how to put them together. In topic one specifically, robots in our lives, we are going to look at unit 1.1, which is the basic robot concepts. And in unit 1.2, we're going to do look at robotics in the modern world. For unit 1.1, which is basic robot concepts, we look at the different types of robots that we get. Um, we are also looking at the history of robots and how um, it has changed over the years and how new robots were developed. For Unit 1.2, we are looking specifically at our modern world about automation and um, how robotics has changed and how it's come into our world and the specific areas where robots um, help us and the specific industries that make use of robots. Very exciting stuff. In topic two, which is 3D printing, we focus on unit 2.1, which is basic 3D printing concepts. Unit 2.2, which is 3D printing process and printers and unit 2.3, which is printing a 3D object. For the basic 3D printing concepts, we specifically look at what, a three, what is a 3D printer, the different areas of 3D printing, advantages and disadvantages, uh, the history of 3D printing, additional manufacturing that is needed and required in 3D printing, the types and applications that we find in 3D printing. Then for Unit 2.2, which is 3D printing process and printers, we look at the different principles of the printers, the different categories that the printers fall in, uh, also very important, the types of plastic that is used in 3D printing and the effects of the different plastics. And then we move over to how to print 3D ob objects and making sure that you plan and how to plan ahead of time and then get to the final product. Once Unit 2.1 and Unit 2.2 is covered, we look at Unit 2.3, which is physically 3D printing, how to prepare all the equipment, what support you need, what supplies you need to get, how to plan to get it before the time, then actual 3D printing, how to look after your 3D printer, while you're printing, before the time and also afterwards, and specifically then how do we clean the 3D printer. All of this is extremely exciting and now it is topic three. Hi, my name is Renier Engelbracht. I am one of the textbooks authors for Robotics Level 2. I'm going to talk to you a bit about topic three, topic four, topic five, topic six, and the rest of the textbook. So for topic three, you'll see there's one unit basic concepts of electricity.
So what are we going to do in this unit? We are going to look at what is electricity, because we need electricity to run our robots. We're going to look at the properties of electricity. We're going to consider voltage, current, resistance, and power. And what are the differences between each one of them? We're going to look at the flow of current, and we're going to look at energy and voltage, and we can use analogies to explain them. We're going to look at resistance and voltage, considering how water flows, using that as an analogy, and a rock slide analogy. So we're going to also define the concept of an electrical circuit. In that, we're going to explain the relationship between electrical circuit and the concept of continuity, and then to differentiate between an open and closed circuit. Multimeters. We're going to look at multimeters. We're going to look at the basic operations of a multimeter, such as measuring voltage, current, and resistance as part of the circuit, and power. We're going to explain to you how multimeter is used, how to interpret readings from a multimeter, and discuss the principle behind Ohm's law according to the formulas. So we're also going to uh, explain the basic concept behind conventional election flow theory. That is, electrical current flows from positive pole to negative pole in a system. Topic 4 consists of two subtopics. The one going to be basic concepts of microcontroller versus single board computers, and then introduction to breadboards, breakouts, and solderless prototyping, which means we're going to make a small design of the actual product. First of all, we're going to show you the differences between microcontrollers and microprocessors using single boards. We're mostly going to focus on microprocessing and the single board, specifically the Raspberry Pi. Level 3, level 4, we're going to go and uh, look at microcontrollers. But in this series, we're going to focus on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to explain the concept of a microcontroller development board and differentiate between a microcontroller and a microcomputer. We're going to also list different examples and explain the differences between some mainstream microcontrollers and single processor boards. Then we're going to give you a breakdown. G P I O general purpose input output pins. We go, we've got so much work that we want to do with this general purpose input output pins. Yes, it's a bit of electronics, but it forms part of robotics. It forms part on how we're going to control the environment sensors around the robot. So GPI pins are really important. We're going to look at the ground pins, analog pins, USB ports, connections, um, LED indicators, voltage regulators, the power jacks. Wow, there's so much we're going to look at in terms of hardware in this chapter. It's, it is astounding how much work and how much work and effort we put into just this small chapter. We're going to demonstrate the knowledge of the various GPR pins, considering the naming conventions the function of the pins, urea, uh, use of various pins and connectors, and explain the purpose of the various components on both the microcontroller and microprocessor board, but mostly the microprocessor board. We're going to look at hardware attachments to this microprocessor board and explain power development around the board and for relays, etc. That will be Unit 2.4. There is so much work into the hardware part. Programming. Here we go. We've got the hardware sorted. We've built our, our models and our prototypes. Now we need to get them going. Here, we're going to look at programming. We're going to use Python to program all of this. We've got input commands. We've got output commands. We've got variables, sequential constructs, conditionals, iteration structures, 
import commands and libraries. Oh, what does this all mean? It means we're going to teach you how to program that hardware you built, how to make the LEDs go flicker along the line, how to switch on, switch off LEDs programmatically, um, using buzzers, using capacitors, creating a project or a prototype. For example, one of the prototypes we're designing is a robot, a traffic light. But this traffic light can also be used as a racing light. Wow, that's interesting. Therefore, we're looking at programming and how to control the output components, how to obtain data from sensors, such as a, a temperature say, sensor, seeing when something is too hot or too cold. Wow, when it's light or dark. All of these incorporate the use of input components and control the output components accordingly using that small single board computer. Incorporate also polarized components, which means they've got a positive and a negative as part of the design. LEDs, batteries, diodes, relays, capacitors, all of them. And then putting all together using the GPI opens. And for that, we're going to use Python. Um, import from GPI0. GPI0 is a very good library with a lot of web support. Hence the reason why we're using it. Anything you want to know about GPIO library, you type it into a search engine and you'll get a lot of answers and a lot of recent answers. With Python code to support reading from and control digital and analog inputs using um, the pause and signal modules, sleep modules, um, random modules. All of these comes in Unit 5, and Unit 5 is very big. Unit 5, you can see basic concepts, GPIO programming, and then design and develop your own project. This is going to be very good, this particular chapter. I was personally part of this chapter. We used LEDs, you used buttons, a RGB LED, motion sensors, buzzers, light sensors, analog to digital converters, LED bar graphs. Whoa, that's, that's a lot of components which we are using for this particular chapter. Putting together hardware and software. That brings us to our next slide. We put everything together, we build a project. Now, the, again, there are two modules here, practical robotics and then product design and development. Unit 6.1 will be about assembling a kit. So you're going to maybe purchase a kit, maybe drop your own kit, maybe drop your own specifications, whatever, but you are going to assemble the kit according to set instructions. You are the person that need to interpret those instructions of that kit. There, there's a few things here. There's the hardware part. There's the software part. We marry them using programming, but we also need to put things together. So there might be sometimes some soldering involved. Maybe, maybe not. Just depends on what you design, how you interpret your kits. It is very interesting. Assembling these components, applying these components, testing, calibrating. Oh, that is so important to test it, to see if our robots are doing what we specified them to do. Write code in a simulation environment. See that the code works correctly. If the code works correctly, our robots work correctly. Debugging, debugging. Oy, getting all those bugs out. That is going to be the test that you are going to either achieve or greatly achieve deploying the code onto your robot so that is 6.1 and 6.2 this is a very nice chapter and you can it's up to you how you want to design and how you want to implement this product then we get to testing testing is very important to show 
how well we know the work. Right, internal assessment in weighting works like this. There's going to be internal assessment of 50% and an external ass assessment of 50%. Right, from that we get an ICAS, which is going to be weighted 50%. I'm going to talk a bit about the ICAS down there. Right, we've got an ISAT of 15% and an external examination of 35%. Right, so our ICAS, we've got two tests, two theory tests. And that's going to be 10% each, and that's going to make 20%. We're going to have two practical assessments, 25% each. So that's going to make up 50% of your ICAS. And then there's going to be one big internal examination, which is going to count 30%. So two tests at 10% is 20. 25 times 2 is 50. And the 30% gives you 100% of your ICAS. So your ICAS makes up, or the weightings, is two tests, two practicals, and one internal examination. Then the next part is the national assessment and weightings. So there's going to be two exam papers. The one exam paper is going to be theory, 300 marks, oh, sorry, apologies, 100 marks, three hours. Paper 2, the practical or design related, is going to be 80 marks, 4 hours. You are required to build something. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the papers. Topic 1 for the theory is going to be robots in our lives. Then 3D printing for the theory. Then we've got electronics for robots, networks for robots. Components of a robot, programming, practical robotics. Now, all of this is in the theory and practical paper. So, both are there. Each one is just a bit or slightly different. So, for example, robotics and our lives. For the paper 2, it's 2%. For the theory paper, it is 15%. 3D printing for paper 2, it's 8%. And for the theory paper, 15%. Electronics, 18% for paper 2, 20%. These are guidelines that were set up by the Department of Higher Education. External assessment consists of two papers. The textbook has got a suggested exam or mock exam paper for both paper one and paper two as you can see in the previous slides that paper one and paper two paper one is going to be theory and paper two is going to be a design paper which is going to be a practical paper the finalization of these papers rests with the department of higher education not with the textbook authors or the company that binds and prints and releases the textbook. These are suggested exam papers from the author. By no means do we need to see this as a finalization of these exam papers. The previous slide would give you a lot more information on how the setup was done. Finally, I would like to say thank you to everyone that gave me the opportunity to assist in this textbook. You will find this textbook has got a lot of practical examples on how to complete robotics level two. This will enrich you so much, especially in terms of hardware, software, how the two get together and how they interact using programming languages. This is a very popular choice or should be a very popular choice for everyone because from here we're going to go to level three and level four and boy oh boy do we have things planned for level three and level four wow we're going to keep you busy this textbook will keep you busy however the other textbooks will keep you even busier thank you so much cheers bye bye so good morning, colleagues. Thank you very much for your attendance here.
um, this morning um, for this very exciting curriculum that will be hitting the NCV um, space in 2023. So um, I'm just going to scroll quickly through the questions and then um, address them either through myself or I will hand over to one of the authors. Um, depending on the applicability of the question. So first up, even though it was answered, will the meeting be recorded and shared? Definitely it will. It is being recorded. And in an email following the webinar this morning, um, you will receive a link to the recording of the um, session that we had this morning. Um, let's have a look. Okay. Okay, then Johannes, uh, will you assist colleges with the specifications for the type of equipment and materials to be used specifically for level two as a start? Um, okay, so I will address that question. Um, so hmm, it's a bit of a, a challenging one to address because DHET gives us the syllabus to write the books. And within the syllabus, there are um, guidelines around the resources, materials, the budget, the infrastructure, and so forth that gives colleges guidance once they get the syllabus. So in a short answer, we as Oxford do not directly assist colleges, right? But what I do know is happening within the college sector at the moment is that the DHET, along with the curriculum developer from the Tswane University of Technology, is currently being invited by the college to see offering coding and robotics level two in January 2023. So if your college uh, is one of the colleges, and thus far we received a list of 10 confirmed colleges, um, that has expressed interest and the DHET has actually gone to their sites to check their um, electronics lab, their programming lab and a robotics lab if it's not a combined uh, effort between the two electronics and programming and has then signed off and said, right, your labs are ready for implementation. So I'm not too sure which college you are from and if it feeds into one of these 10 colleges. Together with that, the DHET has also invited um, a group, a sample group of lecturers to do training at the um, at the institution in Pretoria. So there was a training session that took place um, last week, and there is another one taking place next week, um, and that is with the curriculum developer. So we don't personally assist, but what I can indicate to you is that our lecturer guides that we have produced has got extracts of the actual syllabus in terms of the learning outcomes, um, topics that will be covered, as well as the materials, equipment, and resources needed to, to successfully implement and run the uh, coding and robotics level two syllabus for January 2023. Um, should you wish to connect with uh, either myself or one of the authors after the webinar, we will make our contact details available to you as well. Um, and then we can maybe deep dive into that question um, if this answer is not um, as sufficient as you need it to be. So I trust that that assists with that question. Thank you very much. That's a very good question. So right. Randy, uh, the next question I'm going to allow you to address. So the, the, the colleague, can I use Arduino Uno kit to lecture students? And I'm going to be very specific to add on to say level two. Uh, unfortunately for level two, at this particular stage, it is extremely prescriptive and that you can only use the Raspberry Pi. From level three to level four, you are allowed to use the Arduino. Uh, but for level two, we are restricted to using the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the reason for that being we want to cement the fundamentals of programming, especially regarding Python on a microcomputer instead of a microcontroller. So in this particular case, no, you cannot use uh, Arduino. You have to use Raspberry Pi. Thanks for that, Renier. Um, I think further, just to add on to that, um, I think the Arduino Uno kit, we have um, opened up an inquiry 
um, for that use within level three. But as Renier indicated, the uh, curriculum developers um, felt that the, the Raspberry Pi um, needs to kick off the uh, microcontrollers in level two. So thank you very much for that question. Um, let me just scroll quickly. Okay, just a comment. Thank you for the information. Well received. Okay, pleasure. Then we have one good day. When we come across difficulties in certain topics, um, what medium of communication is provided to communicate with the authors? Okay, so um, we don't uh, ring fence any relationships held with the authors, so we will make the um, details available on their permission um, to either directly be contacted or to filter the questions through the, the publishing house, which is Oxford University Press, um, in order to deal with so that we can create almost like a, a frequently asked question uh, segment that can also allow other um, colleagues to gain from whatever questions are asked. But there is no restriction to contact us or the authors for any uh, challenging areas that you may find. And to latch on to that question, um, it's quite exciting to announce that um, because of the time constraint in this period for November and December, being exam time, marking time, external marking, we actually intended to do face-to-face -face workshops with colleges, which we absolutely love, um, with our authors, but time is not in our favor. So we have parked that for next year. And um, we're definitely looking between January and February to uh, do face-to-face -face workshops to present our products, the curriculum. But more importantly, we are also intending to host professional development programs that is done with our authors that deep dives into each curriculum for robotics, programming, and electronics unpacking each topic, unpacking each learning outcome, and then on day two, so we, we intend running a two-day program. On day two is a practical hands-on, right, let's see how to teach the subject in the best way possible by sharing best practices and teaching pedagogy um, to ensure that, that there's a bit of comfort and ease to you, the lecturers and the college environment, um, teaching this new curriculum that that has no predecessor so yes um, you are able to make contact with us and we do have the uh, training sessions and webinars um, set up for next year so please um, keep a look out in your inboxes in the same way you receive this um, invite um, i do trust that all the colleagues that are online will be joining us tomorrow as well when we look briefly at the programming um, title and then on thursday when we look at the electronics title so we won't cover all three core subjects today we have today only for robotics tomorrow programming and for thursday electronics so if you didn't receive invites for that please respond or let us know and then we can uh, include you on that mailing list um okay i don't see any further questions in the chat um, Jackie, I think yeah. if you are ready, we can um, move over to the publishing video. And this video will share with you the resources that Oxford University is proud to have produced. And we got good Ooh. reviews from the DHET screeners. Um, our books were approved with minor recommendations mm -hmm. to add content on. But the content that we submitted was... 100% correct according to the needs of the syllabus. Um, so the next video will just present to you no. our resources. Asif, I'm sorry, there isn't actually there isn't actually another publishing video. I was unaware of it, so it hasn't been loaded. I think what we will have to do is send it to everyone after the event. Um, okay, I think that that no. would definitely um, assist. Yeah. Uh, but just to give you a brief overview of um, what what you can expect from the from the video is that we have submitted for all three titles: electronics, robotics, and programming. Um, the books are full color. So just to give you a bit of background of who I am, 
uh, I've been a lecturer in the Tibet College in both NCV and the Report 191 um, in Business Studies. So um, I've been there since 2009 before joining Oxford. And what that has given me is good insight into the type of students that the NCV landscape caters to and the type of resources that is appropriate for a TVET market firstly and for an NCV level two student, which we know comes in from all walks of life, different backgrounds. So the books cater firstly by being full color um, to be attractive and visually appealing to students. Right, especially those who may not have had such in-depth um, cat on school or programming on school or any IT coding related subjects. So it's new to them as much as it is new to us as lecturers. And so the full color definitely assists with that attraction. We've assisted with different learning types in terms of learners that like, like reading, learners that like looking at pictures to learn something, and then learners that love watching videos. So the book is filled with text, images, and videos. And the images are either images that relate to real life, um, images where they can see where this coding or electronics are used in real life to help them relate to, to something that they've seen before instead of hearing these new concepts um, and not being able to relate it to anything in the real world. So that is included in the book. Um, there are step-by-step -step guides in terms of the practicals. Um, so should there be a practical task or um, a coding, bit of coding exercise, there are step-by-step -step guides that show them how to use the software, how to write the code before actually being asked to do a task. We know that the NCV program, different to Report 191, is very practical. And because you have the full year for level two, as opposed to a semester or a trimester for report 191, there is greater emphasis on doing practical work and also integrated work. So each core book, which is electronics, robotics, and programming, has in each module, it has um, theory tasks, practical tasks. And at the end of the module, you will find a nice summary of the module, rounding it up, a checklist which shows all the learning outcomes for that module. And the learning outcomes were taken directly from it as a checklist. So students can tick, yes, I know this, or no, I don't know it yet. And what we've nicely added as a last column is the page reference where they can actually go and find the information around that work. Um, so, so that covers each module. And after the checklist, once you've quality assured or the students quality assured their own knowledge, there is a practical task which has a mark allocation and there is a theory task, uh, a theory um, test with mark allocations. So we're kind of simulating what they can expect if they get a PET, a practical assessment task from DHET what they could um, expect when they get the TM1 or TM2, the ICAS, uh, an internal examination. So that's for each module. Once all the modules are covered, at the end of the book, as we saw the author presenting, uh, it was Renier's um, slide, that we have a paper one and paper two. So each subject, programming, electronics, and robotics, has a paper one and paper two. Paper one is theory. And paper two is design or practical. And we've included a sample national examination following the syllabus guidelines for weightings, mark allocations. And we've successfully produced a paper one and paper two, to which the DHET screeners gave a raving review in terms of the solid nature in which it has been um, established. But again, reiterating that these are the interpretations of the publisher of the syllabus and that it doesn't constitute the actual national examination. So DHET is still busy developing the sample papers which we can use and which we will present at later stages once we receive it. Because at the end of the day, we want to support you, the lecturer and the colleges, all the way from start up until the end of the year. 
excitingly, outside of the three core subjects that we had to produce for DHET, we've also included an integrated workbook. Now, the integrated workbook has been authored by our industry partner, Resolute Education. They have been in the coding and robotics field now for years, and they cater to the schools market, the FET um, sectors, and teacher development. So they have partnered with us and will be continuing as our partner moving into level three and four and created a beautiful project, an integrated project that integrates electronics, programming, and robotics into a uh, what, what they call the Raspberry Rover. And it is a car that you uh, assemble, um, wire, and then in the third term, you then um, control on a web-based page. So the integrated workbook kind of has these pocket projects per term, term one, two, and three, that allows students to use their knowledge that they have gained in all three core subjects to apply it to one beautiful project. So we have the workbook as well as a fully functional kit that is available for purchase. So more of that information will be released as we move into the end of this year and beginning of next year. But should you need that information quite urgently for ordering purposes or just to see what it is made up of, please feel free. Um, and I think, Jackie, can we put um, contact details in the chat so that audience members can take it? I think let's put in Liesl's, um contact details and then for marketing for any um, video or um, webinar link inquiries. If you can put that details in the chat and then please take that details down and then um, take it to your superiors that procurement offers if you need to see the books. We have electronic versions of all three books, of all our products, and we have also provided hard copies to colleges that has requested the hard copy um, versions of the books. Um, so yeah, that speaks to the products that we have available that links to the syllabus that is going to be implemented next year. Um, what, what is good of the syllabus is that the DHET has not separated each um, level. So once you receive your syllabus next year or end of this year, and unfortunately we cannot send it to you because it's not our document, it is DHET's property and they are the owners and custodians of that document, and it will be filtered through to your rele relevant um, college channels um, from academic DCOs down to your program managers and eventually to you. And within the one document, they beautifully have one table with three columns, and it has your level two, your level three, and level four, topics and learning outcomes. So once you get the document, you have all three levels available and in front of you. Like I said, in our book, we have extracted information from there to which you can actually be privileged to see, I think, prior to getting the, um, the actual syllabus. So I think I'm just going to go back to the chat and just check if there's anything else that um, has come through. I see a few has come in. Um, when will level to be implemented okay so level two is for january 2023 level three for january 2024 and level four for january 2025 um let's see amy um amy i'm gonna pass this question on to you quickly um what considerations um, do I need to take into account for a robotics laboratory um, to ensure that I'm ready for the robotics subject or coding and robotics? Um, so, Amy, if you could maybe assist with that question just to give a bit of guidance around um, what are the key essentials um, to, to feature within a robotics lab? Well, it is important that you have a computer lab um, that has, for instance, 
uh, connection on the desk um, so that the Raspberry Pi can be connected to it so that you can program it. Um, so it's important also the sturdy desks, the space on the desk so that the learners do not just have the computer there, but there is space for the robot to be plugged in. Um, also consider at least that your network um, need to be able to carry um, and connect and that you need an antivirus that will sustain your network. Um, so basic existing computer labs um, for programming will be excellent, but what you need to add obviously is connections for your robotics. So your robot needs to be plugged in. Um, and then you need to consider also um, that the learners need a space where the robots will need to be put together, where they'll need to walk, things like that, or run. So that is also very important. Um, this space needs to be clean of wires, things like that, but it also needs to be a stable environment um, because you don't want your robotics equipment to be damaged. Okay, perfect. Yes, that, that's a very good um, point there in terms of the sensitivity because I can remember when we had um, a STEAM Day training um, from Resolute Education, um, they also indicated that sometimes the works benches, especially if you're using these robots that, that move, uh, like these cars and things, that they are easily um, uh, damaged when they bump into things or fall off the desk. So possibly it could be a good recommendation to ensure that there's a nice um, floor space for students to practice if they need to uh, unplug their, their little project or robot um, for them to actually have a space to use that is as free as possible from any obstructions or height um, like a desk that could possibly lead to a damaged um, Raspberry Pi or, or components because you know the Raspberry Pi is not the, the most cheapest um, component you know that you can find um so thanks a lot for that amy i'm just going to check if there's anything else colleagues if there are any other questions that you do have please type them into the chat we will answer them as best as possible and if you do have any questions that arise afterwards um i think let me put my details in I see if there's also a question yeah. about what type of training will be received from Resolute and is it based on the college's purchasing robotics books or all the books that we offer? Um, okay, that's a very good question. So the training that will be offered by Resolute specifically will cover the integrated workbook um, and also outside of the publishing environment and the books they will be working with our professional development department. So it's around the pedagogy and tools, techniques, and methods that teachers can use um, to present uh, either combined learning outcomes or um, how, to, how to cleverly um, present the topic in order to meet your year planner, for example. So that's Resolute Education. Um, the, the offering of the training and so forth does depend on you being a college that prescribes the book. Um, I don't think I want to commit to saying that there is a fee attached to the training, but I do know that training hinges off from colleges that successfully adopt our book and for their students, um, to which that becomes a value-added service um, post-purchase. Um, so if we're dealing with the individual subjects it will be the authors and their subjects specifically but when resolute education is involved it covers their workbook their integrated workbook um, featuring the raspberry rover and the project that has been developed but also linked to the outcomes that is prescribed by the three core titles and pooling them all together into one integrated workbook um, so the integrated workbook was really done with the intention of preparing for the anticipated ISAT, um, which we still have not seen a draft of. So coming from the TVET colleges, I know that an ISAT comes around October, September, August, around about there. Um, so the integrated workbook was really developed with that intention. 
and we we include our industry partner to do the training on that um, and they are also an institution where you can buy the kits from components from um, and their details are available in the workbook as well and colleges are free to make direct contact with them um, for any uh, kit component and resources needs that sit outside of the textbooks um, so contacting them does not risk you must buy the textbook for example they are a public entity um, which can be contacted directly by colleges but the training we offer is linked to the successful purchase of our products jack is there anything else i don't think so um Okay, I'm also just scrolling. Yeah, it looks like everything. Okay, the, uh, okay so we've received some uh, email addresses there to send the invite for electronics for Thursday, Jackie. Okay, we. I am not seeing those, but if you can just okay, forward them to I me. Will, I will send them to you. Um, then I see, I'm sorry I didn't hear you with the response to using Arduino Uno kit because, okay, so the, um, the, the, level two syllabus is prescribing the use of the raspberry pi and we are making inquiries if the arduino uno kit is suitable for the level three um uh, syllabus but for level two it's the raspberry pi um can you send recordings yes the recordings yes, will be sent sent to all the uh i am not if uh, only experiencing um no uh, i don't I think maybe I think I he think he meant, yeah, that he had a he had a network problem. It's probably load shedding, but we will send. Okay. Uh, the recording will be sent, mm. and then um, it will be as crystal clear as possible. Then there's another. Um, okay. So, colleagues, please look in the chat. There is the email address for mm. our uh, national sales manager, Liesel, Liesel Janssen van Rensburg. So, any copies that you need... Um, sample copies uh orderings and things like that please contact liesel immediately she will get to you um immediately and then jackie's email address is there jacqueline stradom and yeah. she is our marketing specialist and that would be around any um, webinar invitation and the recordings that you may require um, so those are two valuables and then i'm going to put mine in and i am the tvet publisher um, and so any questions that you have around the books, um, the content, possible syllabus questions, and if you want to make contact with the authors, um, please feel free to connect with me. I've just put my email address now in the chat box. Um, then I think there's two more comments or questions. What type of training will be received? Okay, we answered that one. And then is Python the only program language used? Okay, Renier, I'm going to ask you to handle this. Um, the question is, is Python the only programming language used? And again, I'll be very specific to say level two. For level two, we're using two programming languages. We're using specifically Python and we are using Scratch. Seeing that they, those two are kind of, well, not native, but close to native part of the Raspberry Pi. Um, we are also only limited, according in the syllabus, to those particular two languages for level two only. For level three, um, there, there, there's, there, there's a bit of a progression there. But for level two, only Python, uh, which is Python 3, not Python 2 anymore, please, and Scratch 3, which is the latest versions. Okay, awesome. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that, Renier. Okay, so that answers that question and then my comment is the last in the chat box um i will possibly say let's give another minute colleagues if there is anything you need to um ask or comment um and if you have any questions afterwards uh please feel free to contact us um and also please find out if one of your colleges or if your college is one of the so unfortunately, I can't make this list available to you. Um, that has requested um, DHET to to visit your sites to check eligibility and also um, approve your readiness for 2023 in terms of your lab setup and so forth. So just check in with your program managers, HODs, um, if that has already transpired. 
and what the outcome of that was. But for now, we definitely target the colleges that DHET has presented to us as being approved already um, for implementation for level two for January 2023. Um, uh, while we're waiting, okay, it just says I will watch the recording. Perfect. No worries. Okay. Um, then, colleagues, I would then possibly say thank you um, for attending mm. today's webinar. If you need to attend the programming one, please send Jacqueline an email if you have not received the webinar invite for that. And then electronics for Thursday, if you have not received the webinar invite, please um, let Jackie know. And then as soon as we have converted today's um, session into a full video package, mm -hmm. it will be in, in correspondence um, coming out possibly by latest Friday. Um, but do keep a look out for that in your inbox. Mm -hmm. um, and because Big Marker is possibly a new person to your inbox, also look in your junk mail um, uh, where uh, emails with attachments could possibly filter its way there. Um, and then maybe just set a rule to allow Big Marker notifications to come to your primary inbox. Okay, colleagues, I think if there are no further questions, thank you very much for your time and attendance here this morning. Good luck with all the internal um, marking on NCB and those attending national exam centers for your marking um, and have a well-deserved rest over the December period. Be safe and um, we will definitely be in contact as soon as the college opens up in the new academic year for 2023 um, where we are very excited to be um, hopefully visiting your college and having you as part of our audience uh, members when we do the professional training. So please get the message through to your procurement office that our books are available um, for, for the ordering purposes. And then please contact Liesl, uh, Janse van Rensburg for any sales. Okay, so with that, I'm going to say thank you and have a beautiful day further on and the rest of the week. Keep well.